In the name of Jesus, dear friends, hear these words from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As a nation, the question many are asking is this. Are we about to see a light at the end of the tunnel? We hear various reports from around the country that the curve is flattening. There's optimism as we move forward. Promising developments continue as progress is being made on a vaccine or treatments for COVID-19. People want to go back to work. But in other parts of the country, the sick toll continues to rise. The number of deaths continue to rise. There's a glimmer of hope, but there's still a feeling of emptiness. There are empty seats around the family dinner table due to social distancing. Empty workplaces, empty restaurants, empty places in the pew, in the sanctuary. There's an emptiness all around. What is there for us to look forward to? When we're experiencing emptiness in our lives, God points us to Jesus, his son. Jesus, the same Jesus who emptied himself in his life and also in death so that we might be filled with the love and grace of God. Jesus emptied himself in his life, counting himself being equal with God. He didn't consider it to be stolen goods, as the Bible says, but he became like us in every way. He knows your emptiness, and he knows what it's like to be empty, for he gave himself in life and in death for you. The good news of Easter is that this life and death that we know all too well in this life has been all put upon Jesus Christ, our Savior. For the tomb in which Jesus was laid in is now empty, and it remains empty because Jesus rose from the grave to give life eternal to all who believe in him. Each and every one of us worries about what the future will hold, yet the Bible tells us not to worry because Jesus holds all things in his hand. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The good news of the resurrection gives us hope and life, just as it did to the disciples long ago. For Christ's victory over death empowers us to have hope in the midst of our emptiness. You remember what the epistle lesson was for Easter Sunday? Paul wrote this to the church at Colossae, Colossians chapter 3. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Paul says, if you have been raised with Christ, and you have in your baptism, for in your baptism the Holy Spirit has drowned your sins and taken your emptiness and placed it in Jesus. So he fills your life now with Jesus Christ, and you have been raised with Christ in baptism, so that your mind and your hope, your present and your future is now in Jesus your emptiness and sinfulness has died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When God the Father looks at you, he doesn't see a sinner, he sees a saint. He doesn't see your sins when Satan accuses you. He sees the rosy red blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross for you, for your forgiveness. The Holy Spirit in your baptism has given you a new life to live, a life to live not according to your will or desire, but a life to live with God and for God. None of us know what the future holds. Experts are trying to predict what will happen in the future, and God only knows what will happen. But this we are certain of and assured of that nothing will ever separate us from the love that God has for us in Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus, we have hope. In Jesus, we have life. And in Jesus, we have a future. A future that puts Jesus at the center of all things, the center of the new normal that we'll be living. 
You see, even though our congregation is closed, the Holy Christian Church is never closed. The church is still alive and active because the same Jesus who defeated death and has the power over death is able to help you now and into your future. What will the future look like? It'll look like this. Christians lamenting and repenting of their sin and believing in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. It will look like Christians living for Jesus and loving Jesus each and every day of their lives, devoting themselves and dedicating themselves to what he desires. You see, you and I now have supernatural power, the supernatural power of Christ because our life is now hidden with Christ in God. Jesus tells us to ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. The early Christians who lived in the first century understood that they tapped into the supernatural power by believing in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that faith in that supernatural power of God showed in how they lived their life and how the church grew. Just listen to how Luke describes it in Acts chapter 2. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together, and they had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. You see, these early Christians were serious about their faith, and we need, to be, we need to be serious as well. For by the grace of God in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit living in and through us in the waters of our baptism, God gives us a new normal to live where we seek to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we live our lives in love and service of love and one another when we devote ourselves to Christ, to his teaching, to the scriptures, to the regular reception of Holy Communion, to faithful worship, to prayer, then God works as he did of old to bring us closer to Christ so that we can share with others what we have in Christ. And when we do that, the Holy Spirit will bring more and more people to the church more and more people to faith in Jesus Christ and the body of Christ will grow and the Lord will add to the number of those who are being saved. And when that happens, you will know and you will have the joy and peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding for God will be at work in his word through you to make a difference for Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.